All candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. My name is Hannah Combs. I'm reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer and we are here with Steve Wilson who is the incumbent commissioner, uh, District 2. And he's running again as a Republican candidate for District 2. So welcome, Steve. Thanks for joining well, us. Thank you, Ms. Queen. That's kind of you. <laughs> We're glad you could be here. We're going to give you two minutes to tell us a little bit about yourself and why you decided to run again this year for County Commissioner. Well, I'm running again this year because for the same reasons I ran four years ago, that the county government is, a, is an institution that provides services to the public and that's the very thing which I specialize in. I make sure that the ambulances run on time and that uh, QAC TV people get the high rate of wage they do and in every way that the government services we provide are done in a efficient, timely and uh, thorough way. And we're doing that now and I want to continue to that I want to see that that continues in the future. And mm -hmm. I have been president of the county commissioners the last two years. We've come from being on credit watch to having a AAA rating. Uh, we have one of the best EMS services in the mm -hmm. United States. We, we have, well, all the roads are paved and I want to see that it continues in the same good way it is now. Very good. There are some issues that the county is facing now. Um, some things that maybe are new from the different from the last four years what are those issues that you see coming up in the in the next four years there's ever increasing budget pressure and one of the difficulties the county is going to be facing is that more and more we are in a situation in which our the amount of money which we spend is absolutely determined we have almost no say so over the spending of it. We have a certain amount that has to go into paying the bonds. We run a large detention center. We have 15 different operations which have to have to get done at that level. And we are very susceptible at this point if there is a recession to a downturn in our income without having a downturn in our expenses. So seeing that we are economically provided for is something I'm very conscious of. That is a, going to be a significant issue. In the last recession, we wound up firing 140 county workers and stopping the services and losing our bond rating, and that's something I don't intend to see happen again. So that's an issue, but there are 15 more. Is that <laughs> enough for you? <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, the comprehensive plan, that's yeah. going to be up for review during this next term. And I know that your vision for that is driven by the people, but maybe you can share a little bit about that. Well, the comp plan really is how your county wants, what it wants to be. And just as the commissioners represent the people, in this case, the comp plan is the vision of the people. They should originate it. It shouldn't be my idea of what they should have. Mm -hmm. It's done with countless hours of work by different committees and I guess we have input in some ways into it but the fundamentals of it originate with and terminate with the will of the people. Very good. How do you think the county should respond to providing services for senior citizens, a growing population in our county? More. More services. Yeah. We're in a situation where it's a rapidly aging county and one of the facts of senior citizens and they need more medical services are uh, 911 calls for instance, we've uh, clocked them or, or, or counted them and we originate three times as many calls from homes with people over 70 as we do from the median house. So. We need to be sure we have enough EMS, ambulance, 911 service, but then there are subsidiary services that seniors use like libraries and better maintenance of the, of the aged housing we have, or senior housing we have. Uh, all those are, and more, are issues that need to be taken care of for aging. And uh, I, uh, 
uh, that is going to be a handful. Mm -hmm. How do you see the county responding to the school system's request for funding over maintenance of effort? How do I? How do you? <laughs> As I have told the school system in the past, what we give them is their share of the budget. Their share of the budget arises from, uh, in a strange way, from a, from a sort of social compact. When we came in, we had a budget provided to us. You can alter it a little, but we have animals, we have seniors, we have emergency, we have aging, we have 19 things, amongst which are schools. Schools take half. Uh, we can't, the only way we can generate more money is by raising taxes. And raising taxes hits probably a third of our population very hard. We have a third of our population or more that's income stressed. We don't want to raise taxes and there's no way to give them more. It's either got to come out of the other services or out of out of uh, out of or by raising taxes, both of which are not good deals. So, insofar as our income rises, we will share it, but we can't make money out of air. So, okay. we talk about protecting the environment and balancing that with future development. What are your thoughts on on that? I am a very slow development guy because of the following realizations that I'm the liaison to the finance department and understanding taxes, you realize that if you grow your community rapidly, you wind up burdening the current citizens with the expenses of the citizens you're bringing in. That almost always the newcomers wind up costing the existing citizens tax money and expense money, and then there's no way in the world you can add people without adding to traffic. And one of the most constant concerns of this county is traffic. Mm -hmm. So there's no way you can alleviate that. If every person in America, there are 200, 260 million people over 21, and 270 million cars in America, and the same here. It's more than one car per person. So insofar as you add public, you add traffic which is so I would you know entertain growth with a very in a very limited way mm -hmm. what are your what are your thoughts on fostering business growth and economic development in the county yeah uh, it's a great idea if it's the right business uh, there's a lot of business you can bring in that's economically not advantageous to the county if you brought in something that created an enormous number of low-wage jobs which would bring people with kids that would add to the school burden, you'd wind up again loading up, just as I said in an earlier part of this discussion, you'd wind up loading the school system, which is a very high user of funds, mm -hmm. with, with uh, expense. And so that if you can bring in a, you know, something that's a high-end thing with high-end jobs, in other words, not two workers at 50,000 plus and 50 workers at minimum wage, if you can do it the other way around and bring in a, a good number of high-paying jobs, that is an excellent thing to do and well worth working for. But bringing in uh, an abundance of minimum wage is, is destructive to the county's economic well-being. Mm -hmm. Residents in the northern part of the county often say that they don't feel they get the same level of service as the rest of the county does. What is, what is your response to that concern? I think it's, I'm sorry they feel like that. In fact, the county citizens in the northern part of the county actually contribute considerably amount less to taxes per capita than district district one contributes like two-thirds of what district four does and yet they get the same or more amount of roads per citizen schools per citizen we we spread what we have evenly over every person in every district in this county without friend or favor and we're dead serious about it so please stop feeling like that We've covered a, a wide range of topics here. Is, are there any issues that we didn't discuss that you wanted to, to talk about while we're here? Well, there are 118 we didn't discuss, but that I want to talk about, I, you know, 
keeping the county running in a very smooth way, one of the things it needs to, the county needs to be aware of, the voters need to be aware of, is that this is not a job you can just walk into and do without, it probably takes you quite a considerable amount of experience to get up to speed because there are connections you, for instance, in speeding up and working on the fact that the neighboring hospitals have very slow emergency room operations. I've gone out and worked with the boards of Shore Hospital and Anne Arundel to see the emergency rooms are speeded up. We have contacts in the, in the uh, transportation department all over the place. You wind up with you wind up with um, knowledge and contacts and who you go to in government. And I spent 20 years before I became a commissioner on different boards. I've been on almost every board in the county plus being president for two years. And it, it, I wish I could give that knowledge to somebody else, but it, it, it's going to take a while for anyone else to have it. Mr. Wilson, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. Yeah. We appreciate you being here today. Oh no, my entirely my joy.